part 11 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between data contract and message contract. This is continuation to part 10, so please watch part 10 before proceeding. Before we look at the difference, let's quickly look at employee request message contract that we implemented in the previous session. So here we have got employee service and within this service we have got this get employee method and this method expects an object of type employee request. If we right click on this and go to the definition, notice that this class is decorated with message contract attribute meaning that this is a message contract and this class has got two properties license key and employee ID. License key is decorated with message header attribute meaning this property is going to get into the header section of the SOAP message that is generated. And if you look at the client for this service, within the client uh, we are creating an instance of employee request class and notice that we are passing license key. And then we are passing that request object as a parameter to this get employee method. But on the service side, we are not doing anything with that license key. In reality, we may check whether if that license key is valid or if it has expired. And if that's the case, we return SOAP fault to the client stating that it's either expired or it's invalid. Okay, now we will discuss exceptions and SOAP faults in a later video session. For now, let's just print that license key. And to do that, let's get to the employee service. And within the implementation, so here we are receiving employee request object as a parameter into this method. So console dot write line and let's just say license key equals request object dot license key. Alright, with this change let's go ahead and run our service host. So the service is running. Let's go ahead and run the client as well. let's get employee number one so we get the response back and if you look at the service host look at that you know license key is printed All right now let's look at the difference between data contract and message contract now data contract gives us very limited control over the SOAP messages data contract allows us to control the name and order of XML elements within the body section of the SOAP message beyond that we don't have much control over the SOAP message now if you recollect, we have implemented employee service in the previous session using data contract. So if you look at this employee class here, it's decorated with data contract attribute. Uh, this is a different project that I have developed. Look at the name of the project. It is employee service data contract. So here what I have done is within the employee service, Look at this, we have got this get employee method and this employee method is actually returning the employee object. So if you look at the interface file, so here we have got this I employee service which is decorated with service contract attribute and this get employee is returning employee object and that is a data contract. And look at this employee class itself. Here at the moment we are using order parameter of this data member attribute so this will be the order of these elements within the SOAP message that is generated. Let's actually run this host. Now to run this host we have to close the other host that is already running because we are using the same port numbers. So let me close this host and then run the employee service data contract project. So the host is running and let's run the client now. So the client is running. Let's request employee one. So we got the employee. Now within this project that is employee service data contract, I have already enabled message logging and we discussed how to do that in the previous sessions of this video series. So if we get to the project folder, Um, actually within the client. So let's get to the client of that employee service data contract. So if we open the project folder in Windows Explorer, we should have a service log file there. Let's open that. 
and if you look at the response that we are sending back look at that we have got this employee um, object and within that ID name gender date of birth type and annual salary and notice the order is the same as what we have specified in our employee class here okay so basically using data contract we have very limited control we can control the order of these elements as well as their name let's say for example I want date of birth to be DOB and I want that to be the first element within the generated XML we can easily do that using data contract as well so what we can do here is let's get to the contract so now data member attribute has got name parameter so we can set name to you know DOB and let's set order to maybe one since this is going to be the first element let's set ID to 4 okay so now let's close the host let's close this trace viewer as well let's run the host once again and let's run the client let's request employee 1 so we got that employee let's open that log file So now this is the response message and if you look at this response message notice that date of birth now is called as DOB and that's the first element and this is present within the body section. So basically data contract gives us very limited control. We can control the name and order of XML elements within the body section but beyond that we don't have much control over the SOAP message. On the other hand message contracts give full control over the SOAP messages by providing access to the SOAP header and body sections using message header and message body member attributes. We discussed this in our previous session and use message contracts if there is a reason to tweak the structure of the SOAP XML message that is if you want to include any additional information in the SOAP header in the previous session we have seen how to include license key within the SOAP header now there were some WCF interview questions that were asked to one of our YouTube channel subscribers who attended an interview recently and these were the questions that the interviewer asked him and most of these were actually follow-up questions so the you know the first question as far as uh, uh, message contracts are concerned is why do you use message contract in WCF and uh, obviously the answer is message contract gives us full control over the SOAP messages for example it allows us to include custom information in the SOAP header and then immediately the interviewer asked this follow-up question what kind of custom information user credentials to invoke the service you know that's the reply that our YouTube channel subscriber has given and then immediately the interviewer asked this question why do you need to pass user credentials in the header can't you pass them as method parameters and that's a very sensible question as well now in our example we are passing license key within the header why can't we just pass it as a parameter so here you know int employee ID we can do something like this int employee ID and then if you require license key pass it as a parameter why do we need to pass it I know as part of the header now look at this what is this method doing here this method is simply returning an employee object back okay now it has no business with license key license key is periphery to the functionality of this method you know what actually this method do is different than what is the purpose of license key you know we are using license key here basically to check if the validity of the client to invoke the service is within the license period or not and that will typically be done by another method okay so basically you know this is periphery to what this function is doing and that's why it makes more sense to pass that license key within the header rather than as a parameter to this function okay and in fact that was the precise answer that was given by our YouTube channel subscriber who attended that interview and then this was the final question that he asked as far as message contracts are concerned SOAP messages are in XML format so anyone can read the credentials so how do you protect that sensitive data 
and obviously the answer is using message contract we can sign and encrypt messages and we use protection level named parameter for that so if you look at this employee service that we have here within the employee class we have this message contract attribute message header and message body member these attributes have got a named parameter called protection level and this protection level parameter takes a value of type protection level enum and if you look at this enum look at this you have got options to sign it encrypt and sign it or none none means no protection at all okay so we will discuss how to sign how to encrypt and sign messages what's the difference between encrypting and signing in a later video session but for now understand that using message contracts we can encrypt the messages as well so they are secure to be transmitted over the wire okay so obviously um, you know if it's sensitive data we can encrypt that using message contract attribute using the protection level named parameter and can you guess if our YouTube channel subscriber has got the job the answer is yes he emailed me yesterday stating that the HR called and released an offer and he was very happy with that offer as well I think he's going to join next week let's all wish good luck in his new role and I'm sure he'll be very successful alright thank you for listening that's it for today have a great day